Hey everyone, it's Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA. I just wanted to do a quick uh, dive into the advanced editor inside of the query uh, editor in Power BI. So a lot of you who are just starting out with Power BI, you might not um, you know, be that familiar with this area, but uh, I will say though that as you develop more and more Power BI reports, it becomes really important to just have an understanding of what is actually going on inside of here. So I guess the first thing you got to do is you got to get to the query editor. So if you're not there, if you're not there and you don't know how to get there, then um, you, you definitely should. All you got to do is go and get, um, go and select that icon there, edit queries. Now I, I say this in all my beginner training that uh, pretty much never ever go and get data from this from this section here. Okay, you always want to go inside of here because data is never perfect. You've got to always do some sort of transformation, some sort of cleanup. Um, it's just inevitable. So you want to become as familiar as you possibly can with this area. But as you start doing more and more in here, you might need to make small adjustments in what's called the advanced editor. Okay, and what happens here is that this is where lines of code get written when you go and make transformations on your data sets. So you see here that at the moment, this particular table, I'm on the, um, I'm on the dates table here. Uh, this is, is um, looking at a source, which is where the data is coming from. It's actually coming from this dates query in here. So if you've looked at some of my uh, videos on um, my, be my beginner training and also I've got a video on YouTube about dates, uh, this, is, uh, this, this gets created by this uh, query here. But the key thing to note here is just the source. So this is this is this table is being created from some source, and the source in this case is just a, a parameter query. And then it's gone through and um, it's 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 labelled one line of code and it's renamed columns. That's because I went and made those changes, right? And that's the key thing inside of here. And if I went and made more changes, like let's let's go and make one. So what what? What, um, what we might want to do is we might want to create a short month, right? So um, I'm, I'm going to do a number of different um, uh, transformations here. And uh, so let me just, um, I'll, I'm going to duplicate the column. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to go split the column um, by number of characters. I'm just going to split it by three. It's far left. And then I'm just going to get rid of this one. I'm going to, uh, where is it? I'm going to remove, and then I'm just going to rename this to short month, like so. And you see all of those applied steps got um, got placed, so I'm sure most of you are aware of this. The key here is just is, is inside the advanced editor. I want to show you what actually happened. And Power BI, it's pretty smart, right? And this is this is another name for this is M code. It's pretty smart in terms of it goes and tries to figure out a label for every single row inside of here. And it, and it just sequentially basically writes code for every single step that you do. Now I always say is that you do not need, in my opinion, to really, you know, to, to use Power BI well, is really know how to write this code, right? Um, I mean, it's there's a, there would be a lot to learn to actually write it. There are some people who can and can do some pretty fancy stuff, but to be honest, I've you know I've never really had to write it out. I mean, I don't even know how to write it out myself, um, because uh, Power, the the advanced uh, the query editor does it all for you. Now, obviously, I'm certainly missing some you know some very niche things that I can't do because I can't write it out. But the thing is, and this is what I say: is you have to understand it. You just have to understand what is going on here versus having to know how to write it from scratch. And it's not that difficult. It just works in, as I say, in a sequential way, everything is named relatively intuitively. Uh, and um, and it just lays out for you what um, you know uh, what you are actually doing. And the great thing is, is you can actually inside of here make changes that will be reflected in the table. So say for instance, you realize, okay, I don't wanna call this short month anymore. I wanna call this um, short shortened month or some uh, uh what what can we call it we could just change the name just just slightly like to, uh, let's short and then we'll say like so I just want to change the name like that so you can come inside here you can do that and it makes the change for you so it's pretty handy and um, I would say from a Auditing perspective, uh, especially when you get errors, this is the place you want to go. So you want to dive into here and figure out where that error occurred. 
and so that's um, you know this this is exactly this exactly why you got to become familiar. That's what I say. You've always got just got to become familiar with what's going on. Now I want to show you one quick thing to round off where you can get into a bit of trouble inside of here, and it can only really be fixed in the advanced editor. Say for instance, uh, I've got my short month that's appeared, um, and this is what happens when you duplicate columns. It appears at the end of the table. Well, I might want to go along, and I might want to place it next to the, the full month, right? So I've just gone and done a reordered columns transformation. You can see that down here. Now, if I jump to the advanced editor, you'll see that this reordered columns actually lists out every single column name, right? And some of the transformations do this. The reordered columns one I find is the most common. But you have to be very aware of this happening because check out this what if you wanted to insert say you wanted to say you realized at this point that you wanted to change the name of something say for instance you wanted to put it even just as simple as a space there so it gives you a warning it says insert step and, and at the moment it looks fine right nothing's wrong but check out what happens when you go to the end you get an error and um, sometimes these error these error codes just you know they're not actually that intuitive they don't always tell you exactly what's wrong um, or where to find it but in this case in this case it's not too bad it's saying well the week ending can't be found now the reason for that is because and this is where this is where I come back to you got to have an understanding that's all you got to have is because that table name that initial table name was actually listed in this particular row. And so you have to go and find the row, go and find that um, that particular column name. So let's go and find it. And you see week ending hasn't changed. It doesn't doesn't go and make changes further on down the road. Um, if you go and make something, um, go and make an adjustment in an earlier uh, transformation. And so I'm just going to put a space there and then that will actually fix it. So that's why having an understanding of the advanced editor is absolutely key. Um, and, and that's basically what I wanted to cover in this video. I wanted to make you aware of it, what actually happens, and then things to certainly look out for. Um, so, yeah, so that rounds it off. Uh, hopefully hopefully uh, you can become much more familiar with that advanced editor. All errors generally, you know, you want to be fixing in here if you can because ultimately you might have 50 different transformations and you don't want to have to go and delete all of them if you made a mistake, you know, way up down the chain. So. Um, you want to be able to jump into that advanced editor and try audit that area and try to figure it out yourself. Okay, all the best uh, with the with the query editor. Uh, plenty you can do in here, so be, become very familiar with it. Cheers. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.